Good afternoon. Welcome to the November 14, 2011 edition of the Fayetteville Planning Commission. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind uh, members of the commission and of the public to please put their cell phones on silent. Also, if anyone, any member of the public is in need of a listening device, please talk to staff and they can help accommodate you. Um, Mr. Garner, will you call the roll? Cook? Here. Chester? Here. Poncho? Here. Hoskins? Here. Griffin? Here. Ernest? Here. Winston? Here. Cabe? Here. Bunch? We have two items on our consent agenda this evening. The first is the approval of the minutes from the October 24, 2011 meeting. And the second is vacation request 11-3970. Would any member of the council of the commission or the public wish that either of these be removed for discussion, revised? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Winston. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda by Commissioner Winston with a second by Commissioner Chesser. Additional comments? Mr. Garner, will you call the roll? Cook? Yes. Chesser? Yes. Poncho? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Ernest? Yes. Winston? Yes. Can you? Yes. Motion carries. Our first item of old business this evening is large scale development 11-3903 for 2530 West Weddington Drive and Come and Go. The applicant has requested that this item be tabled until um, our next meeting. If there's anyone from the public present to speak to this item, uh, we can hear a short, very short staff report and then collect those comments. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Winston. I'll move to uh, table uh, large scale development 11 3903 for come and go until the November 28th meeting. Second. I have a motion to table by Commissioner Winston with a second by Commissioner Chester. Is there <coughs> further comment or discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Garner, will you call the roll? Cook? Yes. Chester? Yes. Honcho? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Ernest? Yes. Winston? Yes. Cabe? Yes. Bunch? Yes. Motion carries. Now, Andrew, <coughs> would you like to do these next two? Simultaneously, um, or one at a time? Probably one at a time. I think it'd be easier to vote separately okay. on the, the items. All right. Uh, the next item on our agenda is conditional use permit 11-3968 for the southwest corner of MLK Boulevard and Hill Avenue. Come and go. Can we have the staff report, please? Yes, sir. This 
property is mentioned is located on Martin Luther King, which is State Highway 62 and Hill Avenue. And to the west and south, it's a Hill Place multifamily development. According to that property owner, there are 840 residents that live adjacent to the west and the south. To the east, adjacent across the street, is a restaurant and then also a warehousing and manufacturing plant. And then across the street to the north is a duplex and then a cabinet shop. The applicant is proposing to develop the site with a 16 pump gas station and approximately 5,000 square foot convenience store and a parking lot with 31 parking spaces. They're requesting a conditional use permit uh, because of the additional parking spaces that are above and beyond what is allowed by right under the code. You can see on page two in your staff report, uh, the maximum allowed uh, is 24 spaces and they're proposing 31. And in the findings in your staff report, uh, the applicant uh, has provided documentation indicating that their business model needs the additional parking spaces um, to uh, accommodate customers that will utilize the convenience store portion of their business. And in particular, they mentioned in their letter that uh, they will be selling food products and groceries, and that's one of the main reasons why they need the additional parking spaces. Um, and we feel like, in staff's opinion, that is adequate rationale as far as um, needing the additional parking spaces. And they are also proposing to uh, plant some additional trees and put in a biofiltration area uh, to offset the additional pavement. The intent of the, the ordinance to limit the number of parking spaces is to limit excess amounts of pavement, which leads to runoff and pollution and things like that. So they're offering to mitigate those impacts associated with that. And we are recommending approval of the conditional use permit. Um, condition of approval number one, the applicant shall be required to install two additional two inch caliper trees in the biofiltration area or other low impact development. Stormwater technique, condition of approval number two is uh, mitigating adverse light impacts associated with the, the parking lot lights. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Garner. Is the applicant present this evening? Please give us your name and tell us anything else you'd like us to know about your project. Yeah, Aaron Rushing, Sea Engineering. As Andrew mentioned, we, we, we are requesting another, I think, seven parking spaces above and beyond what code allows. Uh, we are adding some biofiltration elements in the southwest corner of the site. Uh, it's a biofiltration mix that helps uh, mitigate some of the pollutants that go into the storm water. So we're putting that in the bottom of the detention pond as well as adding some additional trees. Uh, other than that, I think he's pretty much covered everything that, that I was going to say. Okay, thank you. If we have any additional questions, we'll get back to you. Thank you. Is there any member of the public present to speak to conditional use permit 11-3968? Seeing none, I'll close public comment and bring it back to the commissioners for questions or comp motions, maybe motions, <coughs> questions. Mr. Chair? Commissioner Winston. Um, I'll move to approve conditional use permit 11-3968 for um, come and go with the five, five conditions, of, four conditions of approval. Second. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Winston with a second by Commissioner Chester. Are there additional comments? Seeing none, Mr. Garner will call the roll. Cook. Yes. Chesser? Yes. Honchel? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Ernest? Yes. Winston? Yes. Cave? Yes. Bunch? Yes. Motion carries. It brings us to our next item, large scale development 11-3966 for southwest corner of MLK Boulevard and Hill Avenue. Come and go. Mr. Garner, can we have the staff report, please? Yes, sir. This is the associated development item for the come and go gas station um, that we previously discussed. Um, as additional background, this site is adjacent to a signalized intersection. Hill Avenue is adjacent um, along the eastern property line. It is a, a signal Martin Luther King has mentioned is a principal arterial roadway, which is a state highway, and Royal Oak Parkway is a uh, local street. Um, we are recommending street improvements with the large-scale development 
to construct new sidewalk at the Master Street Plain right-of-way line as shown here on the site plan. There's existing sidewalk along Martin Luther King and Royal Oak and we put a condition of approval that that sidewalk, if it's damaged or cracked, would have to be replaced at the time of occupancy. Uh, additionally, street lighting <coughs> are required if they're not already installed. We're also recommending that the existing traffic signal at Hill and Martin Luther King be upgraded to provide dedicated left turn um, for eastbound and southbound traffic. So the, the, the striping on the street is already in place to allow for left turn but the actual signal needs new signal heads to have uh, left arrows onto it. The main um, area of uh, discussion, I think, on this one is uh, a variance for a curb cut onto Martin Luther King. And um, the city's access management ordinance states that if you have access onto um, more than one street, you should try to access the lower classification street and avoid accessing principal arterial roadway. And the intent of this is um, we're not creating or contributing to unsafe traffic conditions. We're allowing the traffic on the arterial roadways to flow freely. And when you have multiple access points along arterials, it can really lead to a lot of different turning movements and uh, traffic safety issues as the commissioners are all familiar with um, College Avenue and places like that where you have curb cuts along arterials that really um, create for some bad um, traffic conditions. Uh, the applicant is proposing a 39-foot wide driveway here onto Martin Luther King for a full access in and a right out only. And this is a variance from our ordinance for a couple of reasons. Um, number one is because the site also has access onto two side streets. As mentioned, Hill Avenue is a signalized intersection. That's a collector roadway. Royal Oak Parkway is also a lower classification street. They have <coughs> access uh, ability to that street as well. It's also a variance because the distance in the curb cuts is um, too small. And I'll pull up a diagram here showing you the distances. Uh, from Royal Oak Parkway, the driveway is 119 feet. And from the Hill Avenue intersection, the driveway is, uh, I believe, 240 feet. And the minimum is 250 foot separation. Staff does not support the applicant's variance request. Uh, we feel like it, it does not meet the ordinance intent. As I put in your staff report, I actually copied the language that just says, property that fronts onto two public streets shall place a higher priority on accessing the street with a lower functional classification. So in this case, you know, they would have the primary entrance on one of these side streets and possibly a secondary type of an entrance onto the arterial. Um, secondly, um, we feel like it, it doesn't uh, meet the letter of the intent as far as the distance for the curb cut and thirdly we feel like it just would create a traffic safety issue a dangerous situation with particular left turn movements coming into the site and i have uh, a diagram here i wanted to show the commission um, just kind of showing one of our main areas of concern here and you see here there's a, a continuous turn lane here on martin luther king um, if vehicles are turning you know wanting to turn north at this signal onto hill there's a break in the striping right here, so vehicles coming along here, if they obey the striping, they would have about 100 feet to turn into this turn lane to queue into the traffic signal. And this would be almost, this would be in a direct conflict with vehicles queuing to turn left into the gas station. And mm -hmm. you can see, you know, potential right here for a head-on uh, accident. Uh, we feel like that's, that's something that uh, we really want to avoid and that's something our access management ordinance wants to avoid. Um, and I wanted to show the commissioners as well just a, a video. I'm sure you're, you're familiar with this area and probably driven this. Uh, but this is, you know, taken, um, you know, close to where the driveway would be. The, there's a signal here at Hill. This is looking to the east. You can see vehicles are starting to stack at this point. And you'll see here when I play the clip, uh, a vehicle coming down into the turn lane um, kind of showing what we're concerned with. If you have a vehicle coming down the turn lane and another vehicle coming westbound at the same time, um, that might create a traffic issue. So you see there was a, this red car coming here into the turn lane and um, One 
to also pull up one other clip that just kind of shows um, how vehicles stack um, through this intersection. What I wanted to show in this clip was just that, um, you know, the way traffic flows on Martin Luther King, um, once you get past this intersection, all the vehicles have, to, if you're, if you're in this right lane, you have to turn right onto South School, which is one of the next major intersection. So what I noticed in going out there and taking these, these videos at different times of the day is vehicles tend to stack in this left lane and leave this lane blank. And so you have vehicles stack pretty far back um, past to where this driveway would be. And so vehicles will be entering in the turn lane way farther back to get around that stacking. And so that's just what this shows is just how vehicles stack back at the intersection. So you can see here, this is just, Royal Oak is down here. The proposed driveway is, is somewhat, somewhere in this vicinity. You can see vehicles would stack in front of the driveway here. And so that kind of shows graphically on paper and then also just in video what some of our concerns are. So that is uh, condition of approval number one is the determination of the variance. We are recommending a right in and right out only. We do feel like there is some hardship for this particular side and for this applicant. Um, one is the type of business. It's a gas station. There's a lot of traffic volume that needs to come in and out of this type of a business. And also large um, gas trucks need to make their way into and out of the site. And so we feel like um, there is a second point of access that's warranted. Uh, we first looked at Royal Oak Parkway and the, the applicant did show um, some uh, potential access that could be made there. However, we don't feel like that would be functional for the, the gas tank trucks. And so we are recommending, uh, we do feel like that's a hardship as far as the, just the existing side and adjacent roadway. So I feel like a ride in and ride out would, would allow them access into and out of the site um, for the larger trucks and um, would uh, alleviate our concern with the left end turning movement. Um, condition of approval number two is a planning commission determination of access to Royal Oak Parkway and uh, the city's overall policies and we do have ordinances in place that require connectivity uh, between commercial development and between neighborhoods and um, we feel like there with that street at this point there does need to be a connection vehicular and sidewalk connection to this roadway here and as as mentioned earlier there's um, you know 840 students that live right in this area um, they could potentially use this site or want to use the site convenience store groceries uh, and also um, you know to have an access point at this place would alleviate vehicles coming up here getting onto the arterial turning you know driving 100 feet and turning back into here um, and also if you if you did not have an access as shown here um, when vehicles would come up to the site to try to if you wanted to turn in off of hill you would potentially be waiting and having to go through a, um, a turn lane to turn into the gas station even if you didn't want to get on you know to avoid that kind of traffic so we just feel like it makes sense and the overall city policies for connectivity would encourage this connection um, condition of approval number three is a determination of a variance for drive aisle widths the applicants proposing some extra wide drive aisles to accommodate their uh, large delivery trucks and the drive aisles that are extra large are really um, along the west, along this south side here, and we're supportive of that. Um, determination number four is commercial design standards. We feel like the building meets um, the city's commercial design standards for architectural design. Uh, condition of approval number five is the street improvements that I recommended to, uh, to the commissioners. Condition of approval number six is determination of a variance for 12 parking spaces without a tree island and this was brought up briefly at our subdivision committee me uh, meeting uh, this particular gas station with uh, I believe it has 16 pumps and the, the applicant indicated their store clerk it's desirable for them to be able to fully see all the pumps from where they stand the cashier I guess so they, they're recommending um, to have the trees here and here which allow sight of the gas pumps and our urban forester is recommending in favor of that landscape variance uh, the other conditions of approval are pretty straightforward. 
uh, please let me know if you have any questions or if you uh, need some help in crafting any sorts of motions. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. I guess you could kind of tell that we might appreciate that. Is the applicant present this evening? Aaron Rushing, CI Engineering. Um, again, really what Andrew mentioned, the drive cut has been a uh, major topic the last two subdivision meetings. We, we went through several renditions of how to make this work, how to make the connectivity on the Royal Oak work. Uh, the Royal Oak connection we did have at one time. Um, the grades um, really didn't allow to make that very functional. Uh, with the drive there on the, on the kind of the southern, that drive right there was like eight to 10 percent. We had it going straight out, give a little bit more separation between MLK and this drive, and it was up to like 22%. So the drive really didn't function very well um, where we had it. So we, again, we were trying to make that connection. It just didn't, it just didn't, didn't work out. Uh, in addition, that the, the uh, apartment complex property managers did not want a connection uh, made at that location either. So we, we kind of scrapped that at the last subdivision meeting. Uh, as far as the drive connection, I understand the concerns with making that connection on Martin Luther King. Um, we can shift it further west if that's an option. Uh, we, we, we would rather not have it coming in directly into where a, a pump island would be anyway, so maybe we can move it further west and give us a little bit more room. Uh, increased, I think it's 240 feet now, maybe we can get it up to, to 270 or 280 and that might help the situation too. Uh, so we'd be open to, to, to that uh, as well. Uh, I'd be happy to answer, uh, Andrew went over it pretty well, I'd be happy to answer any of the questions y'all might have about it. Okay, thank you. If you come up, we'll call you back up here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is there any member of the public here to speak to large scale development 11-3966? Aubrey Shepard. Sorry, I haven't uh, looked at these changes that have been made or suggested or things you're going to vote on tonight uh, on the plane until I got here just in time to see them. The, uh, that site's got the, about the last remaining trees on that gigantic development site of 30 acres or more, approximately 30 acres. That, which was all cleared at the same time for Hill Place, and they use the, uh, what this place does not own now, apparently. Uh, so I'm wondering if any of the existing adult trees are gonna be left on the south edge of it. I hope there are, and I hope more important than just the trees is that some of that soil will remain in place, and uh, it will actually be allowed to absorb water and possibly uh, run off from the parking lots there. Um, as you all have heard for years, the uh, streams immediately downstream from there, downhill from there, uh, collect a great deal of water and floods are common. So we're hoping there's some plan to store water on that site rather than let it run off immediately. And I don't know what those plans are. Uh, but that's very important, as you know also, in talking about the um, other student apartments that are planned for the National Cemetery. Part of the water that comes off the old sale barn property, <clears throat> when those parking lots are created in those buildings, will have to go into the same stream system. It'll have to go west under um, Government Avenue and uh, runoffs already increased there because of the new, new land that's been used by the cemetery for grave sites along Hill Avenue and uh, between Hill and Government Avenue. Uh, that's deep rich soil there was dug out and replaced with uh, the burial crypts, uh, which are more than eight feet. The, the dig out was more than eight feet. They didn't come to any bedrock in that process. Uh, they put limestone gravel in the base of those grave sites and uh, put the crypts on that and expect uh, 
but that will be safe. I don't know uh, how much movement occurs when you have um, things going on, such as uh, construction, foundation building, which will be in this case uh, going on simultaneously, probably to some extent, with the sale barn property becoming apartments and this site becoming uh, <coughs> a fuel station at the same time. Over the next year or so, one would expect that they would be done, but uh, there will be a great mass of construction traffic in that neighborhood. Somehow it's got to get out of that neighborhood. I'm hoping none of it from either site comes down South Duncan Avenue, but that's the way they took most of the construction traffic out, hundreds of dump truck loads when they were working on the 28 acres so Mr. of apartments Shepherd, there. Do you have so, comments directly related to this uh, item? Uh, well, yeah, they probably would love to, to talk about specifics of that thing and point at things, but when you talk about the intersection of Hill Avenue, uh, the traffic problems are correct that you're talking about. Uh, the biggest one that exists right now is for people who want to turn on the hill coming from downtown area and there's no turn signal to come south. I hope you take a note of that. That's been a frustration to people for a long time. So uh, there's turn lane when you're a turn signal when you come from the west but not from the, from the east. And that's a great deal of traffic and uh, People, even when there's no car light coming above that at night from the underpass and coming to the east uh, in front of Brenda's, uh, you take your life in your hands and hope your motor doesn't fail when you gun it to turn in there because you're, you're waiting and waiting. Sometimes you're doing it at the last second when the traffic's by, but we have accidents of 65 mile an hour cars coming from the university side, from Razorback Road area, just come flying up under that over underpass and, uh, and cross there. So that's the biggest danger there um, in that intersection. How you're gonna get traffic in and out of the thing, uh, it will be awkward wherever you're coming from. But that's all right now. There's so much more in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Is there any other member of the public present to speak to this item? Okay, then I'll close public comment and bring it back to the commissioners. Mr. Chair. <coughs> Mr. Chester. Uh, <clears throat> on Mr. Garr, uh, the left-hand turn lane you were recommending, does that take care of the questions Mr. Shepard had? We're, yes, we are recommending um, dedicated left turn signal on the traffic signal. That would address what his concern with vehicles turning uh, left onto hill when you're coming west from downtown. So, um, yes, and that would that would help you know people getting into the gas station, people getting into this neighborhood. Uh, you don't have to just go when it's green. It'll be dedicated. It'll be dedicated left right. here. Okay, uh, because I I've been on this intersection many times and going either direction because of the way the hill works there, as I'm sure you're aware, it's fairly frightening. Um, again, I'm sorry, I wasn't at agenda, um, and I'm not, I didn't quite follow. My understanding, I thought, when I read this, was that the applicant was asked, asking for a full access in, but a right out only, but you're recommending a right in, right out only, correct? Um, which I agree with you on. I'm assuming in this location, an option like the one we talked about at Weddington with a controlling median of some sort is not available here because there's just no way to put it. In, there's no, I can't think of anywhere to put it here. Right, it's, it's a state highway, similar situation. Oh, it's a state way. highway too, I right. forgot about that part. So right. the design is also somewhat limited as far as how the driveway ends up looking if it is a controlled driveway. Are you happy that a design can be successfully implemented to make that 
functionally really write in and write out only? I mean, so we are, it wouldn't be. Yeah. We are concerned, I mean, as far as when you, you see the design, as we've talked about on the other side on Weddington, the state highway design for limited curb cuts um, isn't really aggressive. You know, however, this site, you know, compared to Weddington, isn't as critical, I think, as far as that goes. It's, you know, it's, it's not as high volumes of traffic. Uh, and we do feel like, you know, just having simply the, the do not enter signs, even if the design isn't as such, uh, it would certainly be preferable to having that than having the full access in because a, a major a lot most of the people would obey the tra obey those laws there would be some that wouldn't but I think most people if you see the sign and you can tell the design is for right in right out only would would you know that's the that's the best that we can do I think and so in, am I right in assuming that we're going to be seeing something like in order to I know you can't answer this exactly, but my assumption is going to be that if we did allow a right in, right out only, it's going to look something like the pork chop design we saw on the Weddington. Am I right about that? That was the only design allowable by the state, if I recall correct, correctly. Correct. Correct. Right? Yeah, it'd be the same situation. <clears throat> okay. And so you're also recommending an additional curb cut. On to, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Royal Oaks. Royal, Oaks. Royal Oaks. That's not shown in this plan, right? Correct. Okay. All right, that's all for now. I'll shut up and let other people who know more ask more questions. Andrew, I was wondering if you have that um, truck turn diagram that was shown. At yes. Uh, it'll take me a minute to pull it up here. Okay. okay. I didn't. I didn't have anything specific. I just wanted to look at it again. Um, so, I did, Commissioner Hoskins. <clears throat> Andrew, to sum things up, but the first uh, said because I think this might have gotten a little confusing along the way. At the first subdivision committee meeting, the three of us recommended the connection to to Royal Oak for the purpose of giving access to the apartments behind and to keep people from going out to MLK, turning right, going a short distance, then back into the property or what have you. And, um, and uh, I think that was the most significant difference between the first and second subdivision committees, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so there was some redesign work and some ideas pitched around or what have you until we got to the second subdivision committee. And the second subdivision committee um, decided that that particular connection was probably not as warranted what, as what the first subdivision committee. And I think one of the arguments that were made is that people will turn in there and go down and mill around the apartments and do U-turns and come back up, et cetera, et cetera. My question is this, <clears throat> is that whether that connection is there or not, um, doesn't the same potential thing happen? People think that, well, here's a side street, I can probably access it from this, and they turn in and go mill around in there anyway, and, oh, but they don't, literally don't have a connection. Would you agree with that? I hadn't thought of that, but they're probably going to do it anyway. Yeah. In other words, yeah. and so the apartment complex next door, um, if they don't want folks doing that, then turning in there and going and milling around the apartments and doing U-turns and coming back up seems to me like it would behoove them to agree to a curb cut across that island to make it a full connection. That's my theory. And maybe if they've got the partial connection, which would just be like <clears throat> one way in or one way out or what have you. Uh, the apartment complex will probably get sick of it pretty soon and, and say, hey guys, come back and put that, go ahead and put that cut in, is my guess. Um, you know, I'm, of course, pro-business and, and want to help out and everything, but I got to go with staff on this one, that um, I think that the connection needs to be made to Royal Oak, and I think that the access from MLK, after seeing staff's very well-placed video, or what have you, uh, the uh, I tend to agree with staff that that right in, right out only is probably the most practical way to go. Even though I know I know that doesn't do the applicant you know as much good as a full access, but um, you know the, the full access just has has issues written all over. Thank you, Commissioner Hoskins, as well for that <coughs> clarification of the subdivision workings, Commissioner Griffin. 
Yeah, I just wanted to clarify too, Commissioner Hoskins is right. The main issue uh, wasn't that Royal Oak was a bad idea. It was that Royal Oak, without being able to go across that median, could potentially be a bad idea. The second issue with that was the way the grade is, the concern was people turning right in with that curb cut in there like this, and then traffic getting stacked back out all the way out to MLK. People turning right or south here, getting in that median and traffic coming in and out of, and it just creating a bigger problem than it than it helped to solve. And so the idea of eliminating that Royal Oak connectivity was basically when you couldn't get that cut across the median, didn't see how much purpose it served. Um, I'm still not sure I do, but uh, I just wanted to clarify that. So. Okay, thank you, thank you. Let me add some further clarification okay, because the, the first subdivision committee, uh, at least in our minds, we had the idea of a, of a connection that was further down towards the apartments. Yeah. There's some issues with, uh, with tree preservation, but, but I would tend to agree that something that close to that intersection does have the potential for a problem, but that's their design. Uh, what we had in mind, if you remember, Mr. Hoskins, was something that was closer towards. That may be impossible. I'm not an engineer, but that was one of the other reasons. It's the grade. Yeah. Is this an arterial? Uh, Royal the street? Martin, Martin Luther King is an arterial. Township. Correct. Um, Royal Oak is a local street in Hill Right, Hill right. I understand that. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's an arterial. Yes. Yeah. The, and I, I want to, if I may continue. You may. I, I'd like to point out that this city, to its credit, has an excellent access management ordinance in place. And wherever possible, we are working, and I think the staff's doing a great job in limiting ingress and egress uh, to arterials. The ordinance says, where a street with a lower functional classification exists that can be accessed, curb cuts shall access into those streets. It doesn't say may, it doesn't say should, it says shall. When necessary, curb cuts along arterial streets should be shared between two or more lots. It's not necessary here because there's two side streets where connectivity can be secured and access to this difficult site can be secured. Where a curb cut, where a curb cut must access the arterial street, it shall be located a minimum of 250 feet from an intersection or driveway, which is another problem that the staff has pointed out. Just to make those points as we go through the conversation. Thank you, Commissioner Ernest. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Winston. I have a few questions for the engineer. Ours or theirs? Uh, theirs. Yeah. The applicants. Um, okay, the, uh, uh, the fuel truck, as I understand, delivers fuel from the passenger side of the truck. Is that That's correct? That's correct. Um, so it has to it has to pull in in some way that the um, the passenger side of the truck is facing west. Is that correct? Actually, it needs to be facing south. In, in this tank configuration, it needs to be facing downward. The the passenger side needs to be facing downward. Well, the passenger side. Yeah, I'm sorry. West. Yes, you're correct. Truck needs to be facing downward. Yes. Passenger side back west. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's in order to get the truck facing that direction, um, the truck has to pull in from uh, either from Hill Place uh, and t not from Hill Place, uh, the street to the Royal Oak. No, the other, the other one. Is that Hill Martin Place? Martin Luther King. Hill 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 <laughs> the one on the west would have to pull in and then come over the north side of the of the parking of the of the, of the site and then turn south. Is that truck movement possible? No, uh, with the grade that's on Royal Oak now, right now that grade is at 10% the way it exists today. Yeah. So if that truck to pull in there and then try to make a turn and go up a 10% grade, it's just not possible with a with a 60 foot long tractor trailer truck. Okay. That, that's why we're showing the access off of MLK. We have looked at it. And can, can the, um, could the truck pull in from MLK turning uh, heading uh, east and turn in south and still make it to where they need to be. Yes, and it, it would exit out onto hill. Onto hill, okay. Mm -hmm. So it is possible, if there is a right in and right out, it is possible for the truck to come from the west, pull in, 
and um, and and deliver and come out on, on oh, the only if it's a mountable curb the that they can basically right. drive over. And the pork chop is a mountable curb. Yes, it, it, yeah, so it'll be a four inch tall mountable curb. And uh, um, uh, generally, do you have the same delivery drivers? Do they know uh, um, what the how to get into a site? Um, that's that's a question. I'm gonna we have Rob Wadley with Come and Go here. He could probably address that more. He deals with this daily. That'd be great. Is it is it a real random Evening thing, everybody. or is it generally the same people that come and deliver? Uh, generally the same. We have our own transport, which is solar transport. So okay. typically, it's one of the solar drivers. So there might be two or three. So if they needed to do some driving around to get turning into the turning in on a right and right out from the coming from the right direction, that's not right. They would have uh, to be coming. Feasible. Yeah, they'd have to be coming from the uh, west. So they obviously couldn't be coming from the east to get into the site. Yeah. With um, a right in, right out. That would and if you move the driveway, you, you talked about getting it up to 270, 280 feet. Right. Uh, could that motion still be made? Uh, with a three turning quarter? in from uh, from coming from the west and still no. turning in. No, not if it's a right in, right out. Not if it's a three quarter. Yes. Okay. So it, it's making that turn from from the west um, into the into the site requires that the driveway is where it is now rather than oh than no moving I'm sorry in. i thought you were coming from the east you're right yeah. from the west you're fine from the from the west the driveway could actually move closer to royal oaks right. and it would still function as a um uh, as a as a way for the truck to get right out. okay I, so I, if, if you don't mind if i go in my box a little bit about this sure yeah but uh so if you look at that drawing that's a that's a full access i guess so the second subcommittee meeting, we had talked and we talked about moving a full access closer to Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then connecting to Royal Oak. But Royal Oak, literally, if you went directly west, was like a 20% fall. So two feet per 10 feet, you're going down. And then uh, we tried to go north west with it and it was still close to a 10%. So, you know, a foot per 10 feet. And there was a slope, and I think Mr. Newman was there. Uh, there's, there was a substantial fall from the north to south as well that you were concerned about. Was that correct? On um, the Royal Oak, or on the connection to Royal Oak. Uh, the, the, if I may, please. The, uh, the profile that was submitted that showed the more or less the parallel driveway connection, not the one that curved, was was excessive, and I did have concern over that at 20 plus percent. Of vehicles hanging up but the applicant i believe showed they wanted 10 percent which would meet our criteria uh but it is closer to the intersection i believe the other commissioners have voiced about that that was the concern also but if it was right in or right out off roll oak it i don't believe it was too much of an issue if it was actually utilized that way and then uh, the median is a private median and i did talk to the uh the owner of the the apartments to the south and they were not willing to make a cut in that so we actually, the last subcommittee, we ribbed the uh, approach onto Royal Oak. And we had discussed the biggest problem we had with the site on the MLK was taking a left out of our site and the conflicting movement uh, from taking a right on Royal Oak. So that's when we talked about, hey, if you're only concerned about taking a left, uh, let's make this three quarters. And so that eliminates the problem. It was a safety problem, I agree. Uh, so, but we did not move that approach. Now, if the biggest concern now is we're too close to MLK, I'm fine with pushing it closer to Royal Oak. Because uh, I don't think they're, I, I don't see a safety problem if you push it closer to Royal Oak from people taking a ride out of Royal Oak and taking a ride out of our development, I guess. So I mean, that alleviates some of that problem with the the head-on that we were talking about. So the second subcommittee, we didn't uh, we didn't move it further to the west, but I do need a three-quarter access to get my trucks if they're coming from the east side into the site. And it's not only the fuel trucks; it's also the food delivery. Does that mean that that the right in right out is not big enough, even with the rollover curb, for for the truck to come in from the west? Well, yeah, I don't believe so. I mean, I'm not an engineer, but you'd obviously be going over the median substantially. 
is um, is the width of a of a um, right in right out <coughs> smaller than a full access in with a right out? Uh, it, I, we, I haven't seen the design. This this three quarter is shown at thirty nine feet. Um, it would probably be le it would probably be less. I mean, mm -hmm. so I okay. I guess on the economics of this, if I'm coming eastbound and I miss turning uh, onto Hill. I think you probably go around Royal Oak and into that development. Uh, that's that's kind of why I wanted that uh, left turn in. Plus, you have that middle lane, which I believe its main purpose is for left turns. Mm -hmm. And and I drove up and down MLK today, and there's a million, not a million, but there's a lot of uh, full accesses. And this is a three quarters. Would uh, if they were able to move that access to the west um, as, a, as a three quarter in right out, or is that what we're calling that, full access in right out, moving it over another 25 or 30 feet, would that give the turning movements from uh, um, the uh, um, center turn lane more room, enough room that we might not have the, the head, head on situation that it looks like we have right now? You know, I think it would it would probably help a little bit. I, I don't think it would would change staff's mind. I mean, I, you know, just you can just kind of see from the video how far the vehicles stack back <coughs> in that area. You know, I don't feel like I, we feel like that uh, the left turn movements. Um, there's a variety of issues with it. One of them would be the head on in the lane. You know, in the lane. Another one would just be somebody trying to let somebody cut across and somebody else coming through in the right lane. So there's. Most vehicle accidents occur because of left turn movements, and so there's, there's just we just feel like there's a lot of issues with that, and we also feel like because there is uh, adequate access on two other streets as well that it, you know, it should be limited. One thing that we hadn't uh, I hadn't really thought about was that uh, um, the situation where you have to get into left hand turn lane, and most cars are going to be wanting to either go straight or north when you get down to, to school. And so there's, everybody is moving into that left-hand lane. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, so I think that's, that's a major factor in this, little, in this situation. So um, I'm not seeing a good way that I can support having uh, the full access in in this situation. I think it's, 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 it's just too dangerous. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Chester. So, I'm sorry, I'm sure everybody is more clear on this than I am, but can I clarify where I think I am at this point with staff? Sure. Staff's recommending a right in, right out to MLK, a right in, right out to Royal Oaks, and full access to Hill. Am I correct yeah. in that? Exactly. Okay. Applicant is saying with a right in, right out only on MLK, you cannot get delivery trucks into the site in any way, shape, or form. Well, I mean, I'm sure you can probably get in there somehow, but I mean, without going over the median. They can't go in. Not through coming hill. right. Through hill, you're saying? No. No, just from. Oh yeah, they can there. come from they're, the west. They're going west. I mean, sorry, they're going east. Mm -hmm. A truck surely can make that turn, right? Yes, if they're coming from the west, going east, they can make that turn. Okay. okay. And then they can get, they can access the places you need to access to do fuel delivery from there. Oh, oh wait a minute. Okay, so we drop fuel. I'm sorry. We drop fuel on the passenger side. Right. Okay. So you come in, so you go straight south. Your passenger side is facing the wrong way. The passenger side had to face to the west. So I'm, you're coming from the west and you're coming turning right? Coming from the west, yep. make a right into the site. Yep. You're facing south, passenger oh, yeah, side's right. facing west, yeah. right? Yeah. You're right, sorry. Okay, you can deliver fuel Yes. at that point, then the truck yep. leaves out hill. Yep. Delivery trucks for food, I assume, can go where they will. I'm assuming that's not an 18 wheeler anyway, right? Uh, some of, some them. of them are, yeah. but in any event, Part they don't nothing. have the uh, restrictions of a fuel delivery truck. They can right. park somewhere and unload and leave. Yep. Okay. So it is 
possible on the pork chop that the state recommends that is a roll on the curb, correct? Did I hear that earlier? Okay. So a truck could access the site maybe yes. in some way. Okay. It, That's what I wanted to clarify. And then you, somewhere in subdivision, there was a discussion about whether or not you should be able to turn left out of the site on the Royal Oak. I'm sorry, there's a post right in my way. But the, the Royal Oak median there is private, and they have said no go on cutting a hole in our median. Correct. Okay. Is there a reason you don't want a ride in, ride out onto Royal Oak? Well, the best model I have is I'm coming from the east, and obviously we try to get as many people into our site as possible. Sure, I understand. So if I miss turning onto Hill, if I'm traveling westbound, I'm not going to get into our store. Right, because you can't, yeah. e well, you could well, you potentially could. turn in the Royal Oak and go all the way down the line, right. you turn, which irritates the Royal Oak people. Right. Right. Really, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, that, right. that's kind of been my biggest issue is, you know, there's a turn lane in the middle of the street for primary left turns. And if I miss that turn on the hill, I can't use that to get into our development. I understand that. So, but you'll admit that you have more concern than merely delivery trucks being able to deliver coming from the east. east. You have concern for missing potential right. customers, right? I mean, which yes. I understand that's an acceptable thing yeah. to be concerned with. I just, uh, I've used this intersection a whole lot and I, I can't disagree with staff that especially given the fact that you're sitting on a crest of a hill here with major traffic coming from both east and west and lots of that traffic all that traffic that's going east essentially is either trying to go straight or turn left to go to campus or to go to downtown or parts north so that I think, especially with the limited sight distance as you come up over the hill, if you're traveling to the west, um, I just see a major safety concern. Utilize it with two types of vehicular traffic traveling at fairly high speeds, trying to access the same turn lane. That's a problem for me. Well, uh, I, and, and, if, and if you can, if you can get delivery vehicles in. I mean, you run a great enough store that I'm sure people would make a U-turn some down, somewhere down the street and then come back, right? Come and go is that hey, great. Okay. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> I agree with everything you're saying. But I mean, access is so important in convenience <coughs> stores. I mean, everybody's been inside or gone to a store and they hadn't been able to get out and they don't go back to the store. I understand. And so, I mean, for me to consciously think that I'm going to have reoccurring customers with the economics of building the store over $3 million. I just, understand that. I, I have to have a, a good access on that. I, I have tried many times to get out of, frankly, from the other side of the street from Brenda's to get out on the hill and get out on the MLK. It's difficult from that access too. Yeah. So I understand your concern here. I just think that as in favor of business as I am, I'm not sure it's worth I think what is a legitimate concern on the ca you know, in the case of, that staff has of potential for head-on collision with with very high-speed track. I mean, like even though the speed limit is 40, I regularly see people going 50 and 60 on that street. It's, so. it's 35 that you're coming off. 35, okay. Right. But uh, I mean, that's that's MLK. You can drive as far as you want west, and it's full access is everywhere. Well, I agree, but I, you surely can understand that like, we're looking at this in hindsight now and saying, hey, all these full axes on MLK were maybe a mistake, and the, the whole reason for the access man management plan being written the way it is now is to cease that type of just limitless numbers of, numbers of curve cuts and sort of start to reduce them. At some point, we have to start to reduce them and unfortunately you come along sort of at i mean not right at that point the access management plan's been around for a while right so anyway i will shut up now i just had i wanted to clarify everybody's positions i was not sure there were too many things discussed and i got lost thank you very much
Thank you, Commissioner Chester. <laughs> Commissioner Hoffman. Um, in my mind, as far as access management, I, I, don't, I don't think that we could take a stand that there's too many curb cuts, so we need to start with you guys. Um, my perspective from that whole thing is, is that the placement on the hill, that's the only concern that I have. Um, right in, right out, I don't have any problem with that, full access, uh, you know, it's part of my uh, kind of charge as a planning commissioner, uh, safety is, is a huge concern to me. Um, I know I can't prevent anything from happening at that intersection, you know, uh, forever. But if I can limit uh, the possibility of risk um, going into that site now. And the only other question that I had was um, on Royal Oak, is, is that a left and right turn uh, no. road? I mean, it can, can traffic turn left and right out of, is it a right turn only? Okay, because that was the only thing that I was going to ask is that um, as far as that goes, the road width, if we start talking about moving the entrance down 30 feet or 50 feet or whatever and we're, we're throwing that number around, is it possible to make Royal Oak um, a left and right turn exit? I mean, if, if the connection from the gas station to Royal Oak is shortened, I mean, if it's only like a 30 foot bump down from the, from the curb of MLK and you're, and you're coming down 30 feet or whatever it is, and then you're cutting your drive aisle through there, mm -hmm. is there any way to just make that a left and right turn exit there? And then that grants them at least a left turn out at a safer location. And then they've got not full access, but they'll have a way into the site possibly it just kind of makes the whole thing flow a little bit better and a little bit safer. Is that, is that possible? Uh, I believe there's adequate uh, area in the right of way where you would not have to get additional property from the uh, hill place. Well, that, that's what I mean is that they'd just come over onto, onto their side of things and just extend it, I guess, to the east. You, you would actually have to extend it to the west to get a yeah, left turn movement. Yeah, west. Sorry. Right out of that location. Uh, assuming the sidewalk is at the right of way and that's an assumption then there's adequate room that that construction could occur. Uh, just, I wasn't involved in the history of the original design but you can see there was concern by the previous administration mm -hmm. and staff about right turn only leaving that development also and uh, wouldn't want to make a recommendation to, to this planning board. Uh, without evaluating that further and why they decided well not just, to just have an that. idea I mean just to kind of satisfy that and that was the other thing um, is that was mentioned the, the functionality of the grade of the for the connection between the two um, I mean is, is eight to ten percent grade is that functional is safe 10% uh, is what we would like to limit commercial activities okay. for so that is in the range the, okay other connectivity that was proposed at one of the subdivision committee meetings was uh, extremely uh, sharp, which we didn't feel comfortable at all. Like I said, it was right. over 20% and that didn't have transitions either. So not just <coughs> the steepness, but the probability of hanging up bumpers and just tearing up vehicles and such was a concern. So uh, there, there's definitely, physically there's an option there. I just don't know if if you're not going to get the same concerns at this location having the left turn movements with the higher volume because you're not just looking at the uh, use here you're discussing today but if you convert that to a left turn movement then you're also looking at all the users on that street right now okay so we would be potentially encouraging them to use this location when we have a, a signalized intersection just up the street well but it, it, accessibility even from the hill play i mean that's that's kind of a hard jog around I mean at certain peak traffic times kind of thing that's I, kind of I a, think the signal if if whatever comes to this meeting that the signal at the uh, hill would benefit the entire area okay. to have a dedicated left turn but we're not there yet uh, potentially this development would have that but I believe that's the relief we'd be looking for to signalize encourage you to use a signalized intersection versus the access point here okay and then I just have two more questions for the applicant um, as far as exiting the property with the fuel truck, the, the curb radius on onto Hill Street, 
I, the, the proximity, I didn't see a distance given from where the truck's going to be trying to turn left to the light. You don't see, you don't anticipate any kind of problem with the trucks making that turn and then and kind of in the same vein, the time of your delivery, because that, that will pretty much uh, take my first question away, but, but the times of delivery, are they typically, is there any way that you can time that or is it just on demand? No, uh, well, it's on demand, but we can be proactive about it and drop fuel at different times of the day. Because that, that's busy. it makes it makes sense for us not to block traffic. Well, and that's and that, that was part of the problem that we had yeah. over on. There was a similar development or a gas station somewhere <coughs> like this, as far as location goes. That that we were kind of asking about that early on was if if there was a time that you could try to get the trucks in there because it was going through either going through a neighborhood or yeah. just at a very congested place, you know, just similar to this. We have the luxury, we own our own transport, so we can tell them <coughs> when to show up. And literally, we don't like them on our lot when it's, you know, the busiest time anyway. Right. People can't get in and out. Okay. As well. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank Chair. you, Commissioner Hunt. Commissioner Winston. I just have uh, one question for staff. It's slightly off topic, but uh, uh, Mr. Shepard was wondering about the timing of the apartment construction on the on the uh, other development. Do we have any idea if that's this year or next year? Um, we have one uh, in particular. I believe he was referring to the the project uh, Campus Crest, which was the old Washington County sale barn site. Uh, those plans are under review. Um, they haven't been approved for construction or even uh, through the planning process at this point. Okay, I know that that. that uh, when the come and go gets the stamp, it's about what three months. Uh, it's it up and used running. to be we're building a five thousand square foot store now, so it's uh, about one hundred and ten days. It's quick. Yeah, yeah. It's it's remarkable. Oh, Actually, <laughs> <laughs> uh, other question was um, uh, since we we took away that connection between Royal Oaks and um, and the the site from the um, from the west, there's now is the uh, um, uh, the water filtering situation is right there. Is that uh, that couldn't be there if there, if there was a connection between those two streets? Is that correct? Uh, that's more for Aaron. Hang on one second. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Actually, what can, what can happens, you put those underneath the driveway? Tim, can, Andrew, can you go to the grading plan? Uh, let's see. You know where it's at? Let me try to find um, it. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, open up that. That one. Aaron, what shoot is that? It's probably six. Six, six, thirteen, yeah. Okay, you, you can see in this diagram there's there's two detention ponds, a, a smaller one to the north and a bigger one to the south. What happens when that drive goes through there is we take that smaller pond and we have to put it underground in underground tanks. Okay. It's the only place we have to put it. Yeah. Okay, that's that's an increased cost, and uh, um, and then the third thing was about the sidewalk connection. I think the sidewalk connection between uh, Royal Oaks and the site is is still wanted by everybody. Yeah, what, and so. we actually we looked at that, and this side, uh, this retaining wall, let's call that the retaining wall. There, that retaining wall right there is ten feet tall. So I'm I'm struggling with how to get the sidewalk from there. Either it's a ten foot tall series of steps. Um, we can make that connection. It's, I'm going to have to be creative on how to get it. In okay. There. But so, your intention is to get that in there. Well, if if you're okay with steps, I mean, it's it's it would be really well, ten foot. I don't know steps. Don't know so there's no way to make it ADA accessible whatsoever. Right. What's staff's opinion on a, on a non ADA so okay, accessible okay, connection ADA that's accessible. a convenience for? You take another route. Was Staff's recommendation is that there be a vehicular connection and a sidewalk connection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think the ADA is probably not as critical. There is ADA access off of the public roadways to meet federal requirements. Okay. So as long as you can get the between point A and B, um, I don't think <coughs> that is as critical. Um, I know there is ADA accessible along Martin Luther King Hill Place uh, has installed that. Um, but I think you know pedestrian connection and vehicular connection is what we're we're recommending. Yeah. Um, uh, to me, the the, the uh, vehicular connection is less viable, but the pedestrian connection is certainly something that that would benefit um, sure. the area. And that's all I got. Thank you, Thanks. Commissioner Winston, Commissioner Hoskins.
go ahead. I've got a couple questions for you. Andrew, can you zoom in on that? More the two, just south of the north extension pond there, please. Glenn, would you say that the terrain between, just south of the north detention pond, okay, would you say the terrain north of there with your cursor, Andrew, look right in there, right in that area, would you say that that area in there is about as gently sloping as where they previously dotted in the uh, driveway up closer to Martin Luther King? It looks to me like, if you can zoom out just a little bit, Andrew, it looks to me like the terrain is fairly close the to the same. If I, yes, sir, I, I don't disagree. I believe the existing condition of the site does have some access and connectivity. It is the 10 foot elevation change that the applicant was referring to is causing the, I'm assuming you're, you're, you're leading toward either the pedestrian or the vehicular access, but the elevation change that the applicant is proposing for their site is what's causing the challenge for connectivity to this Royal Oak. So in other words, the filling of the site is what's creating the, the extra steep slope? Yes, sir. Okay. So that could probably, from an engineering point of view, that could probably be adjusted. Would you agree? Yes, sir. The, the site can be adjusted. I'm not going to get That's into their, their model of what they need for their development. But yes, sir, the finished floor can be adjusted yeah. up or down through engineering, uh, re reducing the height of retaining wall. And change your access point from MLK, make it a little steeper off the the access if there is access there. As far as getting access between those two ponds, I can't see because this, this drawing is pretty small, but it looks to me like there's a, either a 16 or 18 inch RCP that connect the two ponds. Uh, yes, sir, probably 18. Okay, so that would be an underground apparatus, correct? Correct. And driveway, of course, is above ground apparatus. Yes, so, sir. So they should be able to, to or could possibly put a driveway over over that. At, I mean, there's a connection between the at, at different grades. Yes, if if the retaining wall is ten foot tall, I would say that we would not recommend that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously Touché. there'd be fill in between, would still be too steep that we'd feel comfortable recommending. So, the the size <coughs> elevation would have to be lowered to make that feasible. Right. Okay, but there could probably be some adjustments there that that are viable to be able to move that driveway back further south. For an engineering uh, perspective, yes, sir. Okay, thanks. The other thing is, is um, somebody had mentioned a moment ago that I think it was some conversation between Craig and the applicant that, you know, the more ways of getting out, the better. So that would, that would justify that connection additionally for me. The, um, uh, as far as the delivering of the fuel and the groceries and all that, um, when we have situations like that, we always, the drivers always have instructions at the top of the bill lading approach from the west or or what have you i don't see that as a problem um but anyway uh that's pretty much all i had thank you commissioner hoskins mr chair commissioner chester i did have a question for staff that just arose for me uh andrew how do you feel about stacking on the hill at this point uh, just traffic stacking from increased traffic. I mean, I'm not trying to eliminate access to Hill now, but if I recall correctly, Hill is extremely narrow at this point. It looks to me like, are you adding a turn lane to Hill? There's not one now, is there? Is there a left turn turn lane on Hill? But it's a very short stackable. Will that be extended in this or no? We're not, we didn't ask the applicant to extend the turn lane any further. Um, you know, that, you know, we are, I mean, I, I imagine the stacking will go towards past where the driveway is or right. That's what I'm stand. concerned with. I mean, I can imagine a point where you cannot leave the site. I can imagine a point where a, a, a point, an issue where you cannot leave the site going left under any condition. I mean, given not under any condition, but without a long way. Uh, let's say we do right in, right out on Royal Oak, right in and right out on Martin Luther King as, as staff has proposed. And then if you can't get out left on the hill to go left, you can't go left out of the site. Okay. I still, I, to me, that still doesn't justify the increased traffic danger of a, of a three quarter in on MLK. I just, it just, that just seemed like a problem to me. Um, other question, 
is Royal Oak Public Street yes. with a private medium. Correct, yes. Medium. So there's, is there any, do that again. what's the legal issue with turning, there was some talk about about you turning earlier and I figured out that that must mean going into Royal Oak and then you turning back to get into this site. Is there any legal issue with that? Is that a legal movement? Um, Royal Oak Parkway, oh you mean turning, turning around in the parking lot? Right there at the bottom, yeah. I'm not aware of, I've never heard of anybody getting a ticket for turning around in a parking lot. When I'm, you're I'm in the parking lot, you can make, I'm does the a, I, city attorney well, comment on that? Uh, if, we don't know what the statute is probably, right? I can answer your question. Awesome. Um, the uh, prosecuted many traffic offenses. He is way better than Kit. Why aren't you here all the time? No, I'm kidding. I'm joking, Kit, if you're watching. Sorry. Uh, the one would assume, I don't know what the rules of this apartment complex are, but it, that the parking lot is open to residents and guests. They could put a sign up on their private property that says only residents and guests are permitted in the parking lot. And if people were to be turning around in their parking lot, they'd be trespassers technically. And so theoretically that's something that could be, uh, could be enforced against them. So it would, I would not encourage the city to Encourage, encourage that activity. Uh, use of private property to to get around. The, the so don't we have an, an odd situation here then where a public street leads to a place where you can't go no. or get no, out it of? Connects. Yeah, the street does connect all the way. It's a, it's a square back street that connects. Um, so if you're coming down Royal Oak, whoa. Where you <laughs> I'll let you have that. Where are you? Um, you can, it connects back out to Hill. You Sorry, I'm not sure where we're coming out. Somewhere in there, right, right in there. Stop it, I'm getting uh, sick. Getting there, you go. there you go. Yeah, go ahead and get your north. Okay, so here's Martin Luther King. This is a public street. This is a public street. This is a public street. Right. Okay, what I'm asking is at the bottom end of that median, right up, right there, that's a public street through there. Surely you can't make a legal U-turn at the bottom of that. Or is it parking lot at that stage? What is it right there at that intersection? It's public street. That's, a That's public, public street. street. You can see in page, I think I put the end of your packet on. Yeah, can you go, 20. wait, 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 go back there. Can you just turn right around and go back there, legally? <laughs> you can do anything until you get caught. No, I said legally. I, I didn't hear the question, I'm Can sorry. you go to the bottom of that, turn around and go back out, legally? No. No, because that would be an illegal U-turn. I'm going to say no. I don't know what traffic signs may be at the end of that little median area there. Um, U-turns are not per se illegal, but it, there may be a city ordinance that I'm not familiar with. I'm just thinking about state law. Okay. But, uh, but they, at that point, then, they wouldn't be turning around in the parking lot. They would be making a potentially legal U-turn on a city street. Which just happens to look like it's if, part of a parking lot. If there's not a sign that says no U-turn. You can U-turn, right? That was my understanding. So at the bottom end of that, they can make a U-turn and, and, and potentially the apartment complex should have nothing to say about that because that's city property. That would all be on city right-of-way. So I can tell you that's the what apartment I complex that's where, no, that's what I wanted to know. I'm not trying to con create a problem for the apartment complex. I just wanted to know where the issue was with the U-turn happening and how that was illegal if it was a city street at that point. Does that make sense? Did I belabor that too much? Mm -hmm. Probably. All right, I'm done. Thank you, Commissioner Chester. Mr. Chair? Commissioner Winston. Um, I'd like to make a motion, and th this motion, I don't know, if, you know whether you all are gonna agree with it, but this is just a motion that I'm personally comfortable with. So did we want to have more discussion before I make that motion? We can have a discussion after you make the motion. And remember, Andrew is here to help. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. May I make one comment before we do? Sure. Since there seems to be okay. some of these conditions that we may or may not agree on, should we separate those from the overall? No, I'd, I'd like to make a motion and you can decide okay. whether you want to vote for it or not. So put the whole thing up or down either way. Huh? Yeah. Okay. If that's all right. Make a motion. Sure. Um, so, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve large scale development 11 3966 with the following conditions. 
um, planning commission determination regarding the management of the curb cut se separation. Uh, this motion would allow a right in right out on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, regarding a determination to provide access or connectivity to Royal Arts Parkway uh, would require a pedestrian connection only um, uh, and not vehicular connection between Royal Oaks and the site. Um, regarding the determination um, for the variance request of, of parking lot design standards, I find um, in favor of that. Uh, determination of commercial design standards, finding in favor. Um, determination of street improvements, uh, finding in favor of, of staff's recommendations for the sidewalk on Hill Avenue. Um, the street lights at, at spaced every 300 feet and requirements for the damage or cracked sidewalks in MLK. Um, and uh, Planning Commission determination of a variance from UDC section 177.04 um, regarding the maximum run of 12 parking spaces without a tree and finding in favor of that recommendation, that variance and the other counting at 24 conditions, 20 standard conditions, standards conditions of approval. Second. Commissioner Winston, I have a question. Yes. On uh, condition, determination by you left off the, uh, the, the traffic um, signal upgrade. Was that, okay. Was that no, it's not intentional. Thank you. My highlighter didn't reach it. Um, so finding in favor of the requ uh, requirement for um, the upgrades to the traffic signal. Second and again. We have a, a motion to approve um, finding in, in favor of assorted determinations by Commissioner Winston with a second by Commissioner Griffin. Is there further discussion? Mr. Chair Hoskins. To be clear, we're not asking for a vehicular connection to to Royal Oak. The, this, correct, the current motion. This motion does, does not, not okay. request a vehicular So therefore, connection. we're either going to vote the entire thing up or the entire thing down on that. Yes, right. okay. but there may also be subsequent. Okay, that's, that's fine. I just wanted the other commissioners because they're looking flies. kind of looking my way or whatever. I just want to make, make sure that was clear. Commissioner Chesser, I believe. I had the same comment question that Mr. Commissioner Hoskins had. So we're saying yes, agreeing with staff on everything except no to vehicular access to Royal Oaks. Um, okay. Yeah, that I is, think that's I think that's everything. That is correct. Okay. Additional comments? Questions? Mr. Chair, Commissioner I, just clarify. Mr. Garner, I'm sorry. <laughs> For the motion, are you okay with steps as part of the pedestrian connection? Yes. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Well, let me let me just say that I, I think that it's a mistake for us to not consider putting on the table, and there needs to be a lot of engineering work that would have to be done anyway for approving or insisting on a vehicular connection to Royal Oak. So I'm not going to be able to vote for this specifically for that particular reason. I have other questions about, no, I'll stop right there. Thank you, Commissioner Ernest, and I, for one, um, agree 100%. Um, Commissioner Bunch. I have a question. If, if we don't agree with this, we can go back and revisit possibilities to access Royal Oak. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily have to be what was proposed the first time. Is that correct? Yes. It could, it could be a generic proposal that the applicant and staff work something okay, out. Okay, that something works. Acceptable. Okay. But, oh, sorry. Mr. Mr. Chester. I am, in my writing, assuming that another motion is possible, the meeting is to be subsequent to this. Sure. Right. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Chair Ernest. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, no, Mr. Sorry. Mr. Can I get a ruling from the chair? <laughs> you, you might ask the city attorney, actually. He's the one who knows the yes. rules better than anyone. Thank right? you. Okay. Further comment or question regarding this item? Mr. Garner, will you call the roll? Coke? Yes. <clears throat> Chesser? No. Honchel? No. Hoskins? No. Griffin? Yes. Ernest? No. Winston? Yes. Cabe? No. 
Bunch. Yes. Well, that's tight. What is that? Motion fails. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Chesser. I'd like to request help from Andrew in crafting a motion that would support all of what staff proposes herein. That sounded pretty good. Okay. You could just probably start on number number one and just read read through basically just if you're agreeing with staff to say like on condition of approval number one. Finding in favor. Finding in favor, okay. staff recommended and go through. And it's one. five determinate one through five have determinations, is that correct? Six. Uh, six. Six. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that we approve LSD 11-3966, finding in favor of staff recommendations one through six as written. Uh, sorry, finding a determination, determining to be in favor. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Uh, that was great. Finding in favor of the determinations made by staff in conditions one through six and with all other staff recommendations of approval. The end. Second. Okay, great. We have a, com <laughs> a motion okay. to approve by uh, Commissioner Chesser with a second by Commissioner Honchel. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Honchel. Just to be clear, we're talking about vehicular access because I don't know that number two says that. It says connectivity, but it doesn't say vehicular. And since we had the thing before, I want to just make the, it clear. Turn the page 2A and 2A, 2B. Where? Turn in the next, the A and the B at page. the top of the page. Next five page five in the packet. Are part of That's where condition I'm number two. Except for I didn't see B, okay? I, I understand. Okay, I understand. thank you. And to clarify <laughs> from the motioner, my belief and intent was to include vehicular access to Royal Oaks, right in, right out only. And stairs in the pedestrian part? Oh, I forgot we discussed that part. If, uh, let's see, it was staff's belief that the connectivity for ADA access would work if you went around, but stairs would just be an addition that would be acceptable, right? I'm fine with stairs. Okay, hey, hey, yes, let, wait. Let me stop. Okay. There's, there's a, a, for clarification of the record, because it's, it's starting to get muddled. a little muddled. Understood. Your motion is to approve accepting the determination of staff as to one through six and with the conditions as stated by staff in the packet you've been presented is that correct it is correct it was not my intent to preclude or preclude i think is the right word stairs if i don't know if that makes it so they cannot build stairs there i don't think it does i think they can if they wish to I wasn't intending to require them to. Okay, well, I think they're saying their requirements are not requiring that. So if you go with their recommendation, you're not going to be putting that duty onto them. So that a pedestrian would have just have to walk all the way up to MLK and make the loop and come back. Or across the grass. No, we're, you can see on condition of approval. Oh, when the vehicular access goes through, they have to be able to get through then, right? Right, the sidewalk would Stairs run alongside the driveway. Right, so we don't need stairs in that case, right? At the right in, right out, we don't need stairs. So yeah, my, my intent is to just support staff's entire finding. Okay. And I still second. That is so great. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Chester and a second by Commissioner Hontel. Is there further discussion? Mr. Garner, will you call the roll, please? Cut. Yes. Chester? Yes. Hontel? Yes. Sossman? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Ernest? Yes. Winston? No. Cape? Yes. Bunch? Yes. Motion carries. The next item on our agenda this evening is conditional use permit 11-3969 for 1421 East 15th Street in Hanna. Can we have a staff report, please? This property contains 12.6 acres. The property is owned I-1 has 112,000 square foot warehouse that was previously used for Hannah's Candles. Uh, 30,000 square feet of the warehouse is currently used for a Habitat for Humanity home improvement store. Um, 
to the north across the street is a mobile home park and then to the uh, other side around this property it's pretty much all surrounded by industrial uses. The applicant's proposing to use 30,000 square feet of the warehouse for a recycling center. Uh, that is use unit 28 in our zoning code which requires a conditional use permit in the I-1 zoning district. We are recommending in favor of the conditional use permit. Um, we feel like the, um, the location of the site in an industrial park and these, this actual property which was originally developed for you know, large trucking, industrial type uses is appropriate for the types of uses where large trucks would potentially be bringing in e-waste along to the, the west and the south side and dropping them off. Uh, the recyclable materials would be sorted and packed inside the warehouse so we wouldn't have large areas of uh, materials being stored outside. So we're recommending in favor of the request. Um, we have some fairly uh, detailed conditions of approval uh, listed in your staff report. Um, number one is, is basically that all the materials need to be sorted, uh, processed, and packed inside the building with the exception of two open top containers. The applicant included a site plan showing where those containers would be located, which would be to the south and to the back of the building so they wouldn't be visible from the roadway. Um, we also wanted just to clarify that this is um, not for recycling or reusing materials such as construction, debris, or other regular solid waste. It's for standard recyclable materials. Um, and the other conditions of approval, I think, are fairly, fairly straightforward, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Garner. Is the applicant present this evening? Please give us your name and anything additional about your project. I'm Thad Hanna, and I think it's pretty clear in the packet. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Well, while I've got you up here, um, the hours of operation are right. those are the hours of operation listed in the conditions? Are those um, right now? I mean, it's a business plan of eight to five Monday through Friday, and eight to, or nine to two on Saturdays. The, the reason I ask is for you to get for you to change your hours of operation. You have to come back to us and have a say. It, it's okay. Okay. And so, well, I was going to give you the option to expand those um, at this point. Or, I mean, yeah, we're, we're good with that right now. Okay, great. All right. If we have any questions, we'll get back to you. All right, thanks. Is there any member of the public here to speak to conditional use permit 11-3969? Seeing none, I'll close public comment, bring it back to the commission. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Chesser. Unless there is other comment, I move we approve CUP 11-3969 with staff recommendations of approval. Second. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Chester with a second by Commissioner Winston. Is there further discussion? Mr. Garner, will you call the roll? Cook? Yes. Chester? Yes. Honchel? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Ernest? Yes. Winston? Yes. Cave? Yes. Bunch? Yes. Motion carries. The next item on our agenda is rezoning request 11-3971, the end of Best Way Street and Hollywood Avenue and Barrett. We have the staff report, please. Yes, the, as you said, the property is located um, southeast of Martin Luther King Boulevard and Peter Drive, Hollywood Avenue and Best Way Street, uh, dead end at the northern portion of this lot, which is currently undeveloped and then C2 Thoroughfare Commercial. The applicant has submitted an application to rezone the property from C2 to RMF 24, which is a multi residential multifamily, 12 dwelling units per acre. Um, staff finds that the zoning proposal is consistent with the city's land use planning objectives, policies, and principles as well as with the future land use designation of urban center area. And we recommend forwarding the request to the city council with a recommendation for approval. And I can answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Sanders. Is the applicant pre present this evening? Yeah, Blake Jorgensen with Jorgensen Associates. Uh, thanks for the report, Dara. We, uh, Basically, essentially, there's three tracts of land, and we're kind of lumping together uh, a rezoning of those three, but um, the majority of the land to the west of the stream is in floodway and floodplain, so essentially it will be left undisturbed, and um, 
So even though there, we're rezoning more land than we anticipate developing, there's going to be essentially just this rezoned RMF 12 land that will remain undisturbed. So if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks. While you're there, if I may, then you're talking about the land that's essentially adjacent to 540, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. Okay. I know the property. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. It will remain floodway, floodplain. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jorgensen. If we have any questions, we'll get back to you. Thank you. Is there any member of the public present to speak to rezoning request 11-3971? Well, this is another one of my favorite pieces of prairie in South Fayetteville. Every wildflower known to Arkansas experts <coughs> grows in that place. The uh, cedar trees have taken it over, taken it over in recent years. So I'm just hoping it's treated as gently as possible. I'm glad to see. Uh, not talking about the the part that's clearly floodplain because it's it's all wetland. It's either forested or open prairie wetland. And it, uh, it's it got streams that aren't even on the map. I mean, the water that comes down, well, you see the wooded area straight north there of the uh, entrance to the, to the uh, what used to be Baldwin. What is it now? It's something else right in there. But that's a stream that, that comes from, yeah, there's water from way up there. And uh, water comes down, sheep water comes in. Straight at the top of there, off that parking lot. And uh, that's all from <coughs> the uh, junior high area, I guess, is it? Uh, anyway, uh, it, it is a wonderful piece of ground. And so if, if the more barrier you can leave around those streams, even the smallest ones, the better. And uh, try to uh, make it low impact development as possible because it's, this is going away inside our city. Every time there's a subdivision, it takes up. And now we're getting to the lowest, wettest, and most precious as we go along. So I just ask for mercy in the process. I know you're not gonna stop the project. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Shepard. It is for sale. It's for sale. See, seeing no one else present for public comment, I'll close the public comment period and bring it back to the commissioners. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Winston. Uh, um, I was wondering if, if uh, the form-based um, zoning was <coughs> one of the older zones because of the built in zone and, and protection of, of uh, um, streams and, and that sort of thing. Was, that, was, the, was uh, the build to zone part of, of why you're choosing this particular zone? I'm sorry, I, there was a cough somewhere in there that I, I missed the um, question. Basically, well, are you asking why we're going to RMF 12 as opposed to? to yeah, to uh, um, a more traditional. Uh, use-based um, residential Such as zoning. downtown general or yeah Marlowe's. something like that I think it, this has uh, a specific client in mind and there's you know there was no uh, mixed use within this it's strictly for multifamily um, and it was to the point that there wasn't a, a reason to uh, request something that we felt wasn't going to get built anyways mm -hmm. and I, I think the uh, RMF 12 will still have enough of the residential design standards within the I guess uh, form-based zoning that it it's gonna you're gonna obtain that without having. Um, I guess I'm trying to figure out. Are you asking? Is it are you wanting mixed use or? No, no. Or actually, I was just wondering if, if why if, why if, if, was, uh, uh, if the form-based zone was something that you, you you liked over a more traditional zoning because it's I don't know better for whatever you're doing or better for the yeah. property or something like that. I Mr. Think it was, Chair, uh, I. Ms. Sanders. could actually clarify for um, yeah, Commissioner Winston as well as uh, for Mr. Jorgensen. 
Um, all of the RMF zoning districts are form-based zoning districts. To the best of my knowledge, we do not have a strictly conventional use-based zoning district that would allow for multifamily by right. Is that correct, Andrew? Even RT12 would mm -hmm. allow for multifamily by conditional use, but I still think that one is a form-based zoning district. So he's working within his options well, we of the established zoning districts okay, in, in the UDC. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Darren. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was thinking it was a, a, a form of form-based zoning, and so that's why I was kind of getting confused. But I'm I see a little where confused it, also. So yeah. Well, hey, we're all catching. And Mrs. Right. Sanders did go through that briefly at the agenda session. So yeah. Um, that said, uh, whatever that was, um, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve uh, rezone uh, rezoning 11-3971 for Barrett. Second. The, are there any, there it's are no two. conditions. It, it's, this right. is to rec right. recommend approval to the city to the recommend, uh, forward to the city council with a recommendation for approval. Thank you. Still second. We have a motion to forward with a recommendation of approval by Commissioner Winston and a second by Commissioner Chesser. Is there further discussion? Mr. Garner, will you call the roll? Cook, yes. Chesser? Yes. Ponchel? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Yes. Ernest? Yes. <clears throat> Winston? Yes. Kay? Yes. Bunch? Yes. Motion carried. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Are there any announcements? Yes, on the side. We are adjourned. <laughs>